Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hello, welcome back to Bethel Evangelical Free Church Handling on YouTube. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley, and this is the first in a series of short meditations for the week before Easter, what has traditionally been referred to as Holy Week. Now, of course, it's not that there's anything special in the, the week itself, but it gives us an opportunity to think about the, the last days of our Lord's earthly ministry and the messages that he has. And, of course, to some extent, any excuse to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and the work that he has done. So John chapter 12 from verse 1. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been raised, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this day, she has kept this for the day of my burial, for the poor you have with you always but me you do not have always. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see, also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Amen. We have here in this chapter of Scripture, two great scenes, or one great scene, and two sets of reactions. It's the house of Mary, Martha, Lazarus, those three siblings. It would seem that Lazarus was unmarried, and he lived, it seems to have been fairly wealthy, because they had this rock-cut tomb, which is something you only had if you were rich. So it's this group of rich, rich people, this rich family, the brother would probably be one of the younger ones. Martha certainly seems to be the one who takes charge in some ways, although Lazarus, of course, is the, the man is the head of the household. And we see each of these siblings behaving as they have before. Lazarus, we're told very little about. Lazarus is reclining at table. He is there enjoying being with Jesus. Martha, Martha's serving. What else would you expect Martha to be doing? And Mary... Mary is devoted to him. She is a disciple and she has this extravagant gesture toward him. And Judas, in a show of piety, and it's a show because, of course, the whole thing with Judas is he's actually thinking, well, if we, so if this was sold and the money given to me to give to the poor, I could take a great big cut out of it. He says, well, why wasn't it sold and given to the poor? And Jesus' response is... First of all, don't pick on Mary. Secondly, Mary understands. Mary understands that, not fully of course, but she understands that he's not going to be with them for very much longer. The poor you always have with you so that you may do them good. As one of the other evangelists expands. So you've always got opportunity to help the poor, he's saying. This isn't a case where there's not going to be another opportunity to do this, to help the poor, but this is going to be, there's going to be no more opportunities to do this for the Lord Jesus. He is very conscious that he has entered upon the last week of his earthly ministry, and that Mary is preparing him for death. Whether she realises it, realize it or not, she is preparing him for death. And what's the response of the leadership? The leaders are offended at Lazarus, they're offended at Jesus. They're scared. They're scared for their own power, their own authority. And it's a reminder of 
the way that power and authority tends to corrupt, as Lord Acton put it. We see on the one hand Jesus acting in the most selfless manner, kindly towards Mary, even turning a blind eye to what he knows Judas has been doing. But we see these Jewish leaders filled with envy and anger and murderous rage. And we are reminded of the, the danger of murderous rage, the danger of anger. And we see our Lord Jesus, full of love and grace and mercy, ready to lay down his life for his people. Well, thank you for watching, and I purpose to continue these meditations through Holy Week, through the rest of the week. Well, may God bless you and keep you, and keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith.